Hello everyone and welcome to the next part and today we are going to install the motor and maybe some other things. So here's the bike, I have taken the original wheel off, the front wheel. Uh, I have also installed the front uh, tire, another tire on the motor because it doesn't come with a tire. That's very easy, it's not something to show because it's like on a regular bike, nothing to worry about. But now I'm going to transfer the disc uh, from the brake to the motor so I have the braking uh, back on the front wheel. The transfer is very easy to do. We have six screws to take off from here and six screws there to replace. Also you need to take care with the hub uh, with it because you need to fix it in uh, the fork and you also need to kind of align the disc, uh, the brake disc with the caliper from the bike on uh, the kit motor on the motor kit you also get a spacer so you can use that to adjust it if you need it, need it to uh, to take it uh, a bit out from the hub or put it closer to the hub it's up to you it's up to your bike but it's good that they have included that extra spacer there so it will make the transfer easier for you uh, when you are transferring uh, this kind of uh, disc, you may have some issues taking it out uh, if the previous bike had uh, Loctite on the screws, like this one did. Uh, they may get out a bit hard and it's also a good idea uh, if everything fits okay and works okay, then just uh, take them one by one out and put some uh, uh, Loctite back on them or thread locker so the disc brakes will be fully secured when you do this uh, kind of uh, swap. Another small note, uh, it's better not to touch the disc braking surface because you can contaminate that with your fingers uh, and that will make the braking performance rather poor or make uh, or will produce a lot of braking noise. So this is the disc, we are going to take those screws out and fix it there. And now the disc was transferred and I'm going to show you something else. When you install this on the bike you have here a special washer that comes pre-installed. You don't have actually to take off this uh, nut, either the washers because they are in a, a perfect position. You have this notch here, come on out of focus, okay. So that notch uh, goes behind the f fork, the fork comes here. And this is pointed uh, downwards where the fork is split. You are going to see right away. So this keeps the uh, motor shaft. It's an extra protection from not spinning into the fork. Also, I highly recommend you to install the torque arms that are provided just for your own safety. So to install this, you just leave the nut uh, out and this one on the other side the same. And now we are going to put the wheel onto the bike. Also keep in mind on the side that the motor wire gets out. Uh, this has a hollow shaft and the wire can go easily upward but not downward. So be sure to point this again upward as the wire will go around your fork. And the washers are with the extra notch downward as this will go up and fit the front fork with a bit of luck. Also to make uh, installment a lot more easy, I highly recommend you to take off the caliper, the brake caliper, as we can easy fit this later. And that will allow us to insert the wheel with the disc easier. Or if you do not want to take it off entirely, you can leave it that way so it moves easy. So this will enter between the pads when you are inserting the wheel. This uh, step might be a bit difficult, but it gets easier if you actually put the bike down. So the weight of the bike works together with you. So the bike pushes onto that shaft and that's it. It has fitted the front fork. Now we are going to tighten up uh, the nuts just by hand. And we are going to pay attention if the disc brake will touch the fork and it doesn't. Also we are going to look at the screws that hold it and they also get millimetric between this part here. 
but they don't rub they don't touch so it's all okay also the caliper has fitted the space there but it's going to need some uh, adjustment onto the bracket but it's all okay and then tighten up the screw secure them uh, secure the caliper and adjust it and final test it spins freely nothing is touching no weird noise and you can see this spins forever and forever there is no drag in this kind of motor because this is a as i told you in the previous video this is a geared motor that has a one-way clutch so it disconnects from the shaft when it's not powered so it doesn't have any kind of drag that you get on usual electric motors so when you ride this bike you can ride it with no power and you are not going to feel any kind of resistance which is very good for improving efficiency of your bike and now that we have a fully installed motor we need to install the throttle that's very easy it's just like installing a bell or something like that uh, install the controller for the lcd lcd bracket these are just like on an any other kind of bikes this is the original display and look at that uh, both displays have the same kind of buttons very interesting and also this is the original accelerator so i'm going to have actually two accelerators this is going to be very interesting as i can actually manually modulate front motor and rear motor that's going to be uh, really fun and now all i have to do is to route the wiring along the uh, frame with those uh, concentrated cables and I'm going to use the um, rear rack here to install the battery and underneath it I'm going to put the controller and now last but not least we have to install the controller and the battery so I have the cable from the motor and also the cable that comes from the accelerator and the brake levers they should connect here to the plug i'm going to put this controller box underneath here and i'm going to install the battery on the rack because i don't want to drill my frame and the frame on this bike doesn't have a bottle holder so there are no holes for that and i'm going to connect the motor plug with the arrow here pointing to the arrow there you know that from the other videos until you get to that sign there that means fully inserted these connectors are special and they are fully waterproof so they take a bit of wiggling until they fully are inserted into the correct position and the other one with the lcd and accelerator same thing here arrow to arrow and until that one so it gets fully waterproof <laughs> now it's okay same with the motor and I'm going to fix this underneath on this part here I'm going to put it that way and as simple as that I'm already securing the controller to the decided position. Of course you can fit this anywhere on your bike. And now comes the battery, even more easy. This is going to sit here. And I'm also going to secure this with the provided Velcro straps. Just like this. It actually sits pretty nice. one velcro and a second one for safety and that's okay in case you are wondering how good is uh, this uh, mounting of the battery well i can lift the bike just by pulling the battery these are very strong and you can put more of those also you can use that uh, metallic uh, bracket that I have shown you and you can fix that under the uh, rack here and secure it with bolts but this is uh, more for testing right now so it should suffice all I have to do now is to connect the battery to the co uh, controller here and also to 
zip tie all the excess wires so they do not uh, touch the wheel or do any kind of uh, nasty trouble and it's nothing like a few zip ties to fix the problem along with on the frame and also on the front fork to secure all the wires and the new cockpit is ready for action to displays here you can see how great the uh, kit one is with color display and how good it looks uh, in comparison with the original one and that was it for this episode now I have to fully charge the original battery and the new battery here and see how this uh, bike will perform with the motor we are going to do a full review of the motor to see how the kit motor performs and then we are going to have some fun with this e-bike so we are going to activate the second motor and see how this goes uh, I'm going to do this because I want to really review the performance of that motor so in this configuration with two motors on uh, an e-bike uh, this motor will have to do a lot of work uh, not because that motor will uh, bring extra drag because it's not going to but it's going to pull a lot of weight so not only me and the bike but it's going to carry another battery which is not its battery and another motor this weight a lot more so the bike is now a lot more heavy so that motor needs to do a lot more work than it's uh, it expects to do let's say it expects to do it's not expecting anything because it's just a motor all right so it's going to be a very interesting test which is going to come very soon and we are going to see then how this uh, whole contraption will uh, perform. Until then, see you and bye bye.